Botswana, a landlocked country of some 600,000 square kilometres, lies in the southern part of the African continent, with Namibia to the west and north, Zimbabwe to the east and South Africa to the south. Formerly known as Bashwanaland, Botswana gained independence in 1966 from being a British protectorate and 40 years on now has a population of 1.7 million people. Botswana was once seen as one of the poorest nations in Africa, the main export of which was beef. Its fortunes changed radically with the discovery by De Beers in 1967 of the Arapa diamond mine. This discovery set the scene for Botswana to develop a mining culture framed within a mining act that is now attracting hundreds of millions of resource development and exploration dollars, despite the country's challenging exploration environment. With the fortunes gained from the various diamond ventures all discovered by De Beers, Debswana, a joint venture between the Botswana government and De Beers, has been the main reason over the last three decades for elevating this once poor nation to one which now boasts the highest gross domestic product in Africa, and one which currently has a higher credit rating than Japan. Through this same process, Botswana now has plans for the capital city of Gaborone to become the diamond capital of the world. Diamonds are forever, though their primary source is unsustainable. The country's continued reliance on diamond revenues for the welfare of future generations is entirely dependent upon continued exploration successes. This fact is well recognised by the Ministry of Minerals, Energy and Water Affairs of Botswana, which is now encouraging diversification in the hunt for the country's other mineral resources. Blessed with having the world's largest diamond resources, Botswana also has vast coal resources, producing nickel and gold resources, planned production for copper resources, and ongoing exploration and development of many other minerals, such as Mount Burgess Mining's Kehabi Base Metals Project. The Geological Survey Department of Botswana first took the initiative in the early 1970s to conduct a geochemical sampling program in what was then the very remote Kehabi area recognising that this portion of the Proterozoic Belt that lies on the Botswana side of the border with Namibia had the potential to host base metals. Many such programs are conducted by the Department of Geological Survey for the purpose of initiating potential discoveries that can then be advanced and possibly developed by mining and exploration companies. Essentially what happens in geology is that you look at areas where you think you will find things you are looking for, right? And you know, in 1978 what then happened was that uh, we actually went out there for a reconnaissance uh, visit with the directors at the time, and I was just one of the young geologists there. And we looked at Aha Hills and we said, look, you know, with this type of rocks, you are likely to find uh, lead zinc, Mississippi Valley type lead zinc deposits, right? Once we had finished the geochemistry, we, we then discovered that there were lead zinc anomalies, right, from the geochemistry. After the six months, we came back, wrote the reports, and started selling the idea to the private sector so they could spend more money. And as a consequence to that, uh, Billiton, Billiton actually took licenses in that area, and they confirmed what we had discovered. Mount Burgess Mining's decision to get involved in the Kihabi Base Metals project in 2003 arose for the following reasons. The company had already acquired that portion of the same Proterozoic belt, which lies on the Namibian side of the border, where it's exploring for diamonds. And recognising its potential for base metals, 
saw the need to gain control of the whole belt. Botswana, with its high credit rating, low sovereign risk profile and recognised mining act, represented a sound investment opportunity. When a uh, company applies for a prospecting licence on an open ground, the application is first received by the office of the director and then that is then processed and sent to the prospecting license team which checks for financial competence, technical competence and then um, that recommendation is sent back to the director who then validates it and sends it to the minister for approval. Mount Bird is at the present uh, drilling out a uh, three, four kilometer zone of uh, lead, zinc, silver, copper and some sporadic uh, vanadium mineralization uh, along a contact between uh, dolomite and quartzite but hosted within the quartzite itself. Uh, at the moment we're on line 9900 east drilling drill hole KIC uh, 036 um, this uh, drill hole is basically testing uh, a zone of about 60 meters at 2% zinc that we have already intersected. At the moment our drilling is on 100 meter spacing and we are drilling approximately 30 to 40 meters between drill holes and we hope in that drilling to get continuity from hole to hole to hole so we're confident and we can block out uh, mineralization uh, according to the Australian JAW code, which will be um, where we can base our bankable feasibility study on. On the present section, we are doing exactly that. The reason we're drilling six holes there, to make absolutely sure we get an understanding of the geometry of the mineralization and confidence so we can project it either side. Those big bags um, represent a complete meter of geology ground drilled. However, the problem is it's too bulky and too large to take to the laboratory. So what we tend to do is we want to split it to a manageable um, size. We also collect next to the actual uh, data, the uh, physical chips. Um, we tend to collect them in one meter samples and we store them to have a library for future use as we learn more and more, every meter. Another part of the process here is we tend to survey the drill holes with a camera and a, a three-dimensional compass. Um, this is crucial because quite often drill holes have a tendency to deviate either in dip or in azimuth. So we put the camera in the position where the steel rods are, which is just behind the hammer, and after the timer has gone off, it takes a photo both of a little compass that shows a dip and the azimuth. We retrieve the camera, we open up the barrel, the tube, and we have a look a little round disc shows both azimuth and dip and then we can trace which way the drill hole has been going. Although the drilling is slow, um, at the same time we have got very minimal contamination so far. The drill holes are standing up very well and uh, the dolomite is quite a, a, a massive uh, rock, quite easy to drill, um, sometimes a little bit of broken ground at the actual contact. Also the quartzite is also very uh, homogeneous, very hard rock. So uh, maybe slow drilling, but from a, uh, um, a sampling perspective, we're actually getting a very good, clean sample. So in this area, the geology goes like this. We have the Kalahari sand on top. It runs for about 16 meters, we say, at most. And from the Kalahari sands, we have the hanging wall. The hanging wall is the dolomite and it does have nothing and there isn't any mineralization in the dolomite. And from the dolomite, we go to where our host minerals are. The host minerals are the, uh, is the quasite. And the quasite, that's where our mineralization zone is. We have the last uh, rock, which is uh, the quasite. That's the pyretic, it is usually pyretic. Uh, orientated, so it's the pyratic, we call it the pyratic foot wall. Samples are then taken to the laboratory for processing. When we received the samples, I first checked it against the papers, and then I uh, opened the bags and put it in uh, stainless steel buckets, which goes to the oven 
for uh, overnight at 105 degrees. Next morning we take it out and split it uh, with a sample ruffler, we call it a ruffler, and then to a suitable size, about 250 grams, and that portion goes to the swing disc mill where we mill it to a very fine grade and then we put it in a packet and then the packet is transferred to the lab on the other side where the digestion of the sample is taking place. We use this prepared sample from the other side and then we weigh 0.1 gram on the chemical balance and this we transfer to a test tube We put in two mil acid mixture in every sample. And then in this stage, when we complete the whole sequence, we put the whole tray on the digester. Now cool to room temperature. Then we put in our acid mixture, 15 mils. Okay. Then we shake it on the shaker to mix the contents. And then we leave, put it back into the tray and let it settle down overnight. This is the culmination of the process you've been observing today. Once the samples have been chemically prepared and dissolved, they are brought to this laboratory for quantification of the elements and concentrations therein. What happens is the sample is introduced into that plasma, which is at a very high temperature. Characteristic radiation for each line is, is, is generated and the concentration of the elements is proportional to the intensity. As you can see here, this is from low to high intensity values for zinc 206.19 nanometer. The instrument is calibrated using a series of standards of known concentration. Computer analysis is done, uh, calibration curves are generated. And once that has been done, you can proceed to start reading your unknown samples. From the laboratory, the sample results are plotted on cross sections so we can outline the areas of lead, zinc and silver values. We use this then to carry out a structural interpretation and do some planning for the subsequent drilling. Results from drilling are used for a resource modelling exercise to determine the extent and grade of the mineralisation and ultimately for a mine planning exercise. Most of Botswana is covered by a layer of Kalahari sand, which masks the primary basement rocks, hosting the many sought-after mineral deposits. The economic development of Botswana has occurred largely due to the country's reliance on the exploitation of its mineral resources. With the sustainability of current metal prices, Mount Burgess Mining's Kihabi project has a very strong chance of becoming primarily a zinc producer and a source of economic growth for Botswana.